And welcome to the inaugural edition of Boggy Geeks. I'm your co-host, Bobby Behar. Timmy is... Jason Elliott. How are you guys doing out there in YouTube land and internet land? So, we're going to start doing uh, a video cast, vidcast. Uh, we're going to be covering comics, movies, action figures, video games, maybe uh, music if something good drops. Maybe even pro wrestling. Yeah, drink it in, man. Sports will be covered. Um, okay, so first off, we are going to jump into... Movie trailers. This past week we saw three big ones drop. John Wick, Chapter 2. Mr. Wick, do enjoy your party. Uh, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers film. It's happening! And Iron, Iron Fist. <clears throat> it's time. A child touched by fire, destined to be our greatest warrior. You are a living weapon. This is my purpose. So there are the three trailers. Jason, what you think? You know what, let's, let's go with uh, Power Rangers. This is one I saw first. And I'll say this, I'm a huge, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm a huge bum, Power bum, Rangers. Bum, bum, bum. I'm a huge Power Rangers fan, uh, have been. I, was a I started out as a closet fan when I was in the seventh grade, seventh and eighth grade. You know, then I just kind of figured, you know what, I like this stuff, so I'm not gonna you know, hide it any longer. I kind of figured, you know, it was going to be different, of course, and after reading uh, Max Landis's excellent script, if you can find it, if you can get with him on Twitter, please do, because, you know, he'll probably send you a link, you know, but I thought it was, it was good. Um, a little short on Ranger action, and I kind of figured, you know, it'd probably be that way since, you know, the effects are probably not done, but I do like what they're doing with the suits and the fact that they seem a little more organic and extensions of the power coins. And it seems like they have powers, you know, even I, when they're not morphed. Yeah, I got that idea, that impression when uh, they, they jump and can break things when they're not in their suit. Uh, we saw a glimpse of the suit. We saw a glimpse when it was morphing onto them, which, you know, it does give title to morphing. Um, I I liked it. I thought uh, it's a little little darker than what we might be used to. I. Uh, was a Power Rangers fan in the in junior high and and didn't hide it. Made fun, got, and actually I didn't get made fun of it, which was which is cool. Hmm. Um, I know, right? Uh, but yeah, I, I like the uh, I like the approach of it. Um, I, I like that they're going a little darker. And they're not the cookie cutter heroes. They are slightly damaged, and we do like our heroes a little a little on the damaged side. <clears throat> second film, uh, second trailer, Iron Fist, with Danny Rand coming into the Netflix Marvel universe. Yes, yes. I mean. <sighs> Pretty much, I've been waiting for this, you know, and with Marvel just expanding, you know, on the TV, you know, this was ripe, ripe, ripe for interpretation. It's too bad we didn't get the Ray Park live action movie from years back, but hey, you know what, Finn Jones looks like he's gonna just make an awesome Danny Rand. The, uh, the choreography is pretty awesome. I mean, it's just... I'm hoping they use the same choreographer from, from Daredevil. Because those fight scenes are... Very brutal. Le yeah. uh, legit. Um, <clears throat> I like the special effects of the Iron Fist hand. <laughs> yeah, it you glows. Can see the, you I can like that. Where you can see his bones. Yeah, I like everything. that. Um, all right, quick question. You Have you finished Luke Cage? I have. Okay, I, I'm still <clears throat> midway through it. I'm, I'm loving, loving it. Top two, chop, chop. I know, I know. Um, with Iron Fist, uh, what are you hoping to see? I'm hoping that we see the origins of uh, Kun Lun. Um, I'm hoping that we do get a glimpse of him, at least, you know, him talking about Luke Cage, maybe he bumps into him, or maybe Cage makes an appearance. Uh, I don't know, I mean, I'm just hoping for some really, you know, great character work, great action. 
I know um, maybe Misty Knight could appear. I mean, you know, Claire Temple is going to appear. They cast Colleen. Colleen Wing, yeah. Jessica gonna, Henwick is yeah. uh, playing Colleen Wing. So, I mean, she looked awesome in that trailer with that kendo stick just whacking the shit out of people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping for, uh, what was it? Uh, Shang. Shang-Chi. Shang it was announced. Was it announced? Yes, Perfect. it was. It was announced. And which kind of surprises me because, you know, Shang-Chi kind of came out during that time too when all, you know, the. The martial arts movies were imported, mm -hmm. you know, from you know China, Korea. You Everyone know. was kung fu fighting. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Especially you know, in you know the the black community, they loved you know those mm -hmm. movies. So you know Shang Chi, you know you got Danny Rand, and you got you know Luke Cage. I mean, it's it's basically almost like a throwback to that era. Yeah, you know, that seventies era. So. I mean, I'm I'm interested to see what they do with Shang Chi. He's not a character that's always been like at the forefront of things. You know, he's more like that C list character. Yeah. And the thing is, I have no doubt that they will, you know, do they'll, him justice. They'll, they'll, the, Marvel has a good way of making a C list character an A list uh, movie star. Also, we saw pictures of the Defenders together. They've started filming on that. Yes. They started, they're they was we'll the Iron Fist comes out in March in time for my birthday. We get the Defenders in the summer, and then in November we get the Punisher, which looks insane, and they've cast Micro. Now, I've heard that uh, it was supposed to come out 2018. I think they pushed it up. They're going to have all three in one year. Okay. And cool. Sigourney Weaver is the bad guy yes. in the Defenders, which yes. I want to see who she's playing. Yeah, you know, the thing is, ever since, I guess, you know, since the Alien movie, Alien 5, or however you want to say, Alien 3, right? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, but yeah. ever since, you know, that was pushed back, uh, looks like, you know, she has some free time on her hands. And we... That's what I was going to say. <laughs> we, and we reap the rewards. Um. Okay, so... Uh, and then what else we saw? What else did we see? We saw... We saw, we saw oh, the John Wick. John Wick, chapter 2. Keanu Reeves kicking ass once again <clears throat> as the semi-retired, not retired hitman kicking ass. And I love John Wick 1. Uh, John Wick 2, we get Lawrence Fishburne added into it, which... A little Matrix uh, reunion there. <laughs> uh, you know what? I I'm looking forward to it. Seems like he's got a new dog. <laughs> <laughs> and, Don't uh, touch this one. Yeah, and the action here has <clears throat> is, is, is been ramped up. I mean... It's like, you know, with the Matrix, you know, you had, you know, a few little classic battles, but then Matrix Revolutions and then Reloaded, you know, boom, you know, it's they up the ante. So it looks like they're doing the same thing here. And you can see Lance Reddick back, you know, and, mm -hmm. and then, you know, Ian McShane. Ian McShane is, is in it. And so we're just trying to, I mean, I don't know if he's going to be a bad guy this time or, you know, it kind of looked like he was, you know, telling them, hey, you don't know what's coming and look like, you know, he could have been behind it or kind of been threatening him or... He knew something that John didn't. I mean, Ian McShane's always a good bad guy. That's what really here. He just very. he just has that attitude about him. If you've seen him in, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, Deadwood and <clears throat> Ray Donovan. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know he, he makes an excellent excellent bad guy, and also he's a fan of Family Guy. <laughs> Is he really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know this. Yeah, he loves Family Guy. Makes sense. Um, okay, so those are the trailers. Those are the movies. Um, next, comics. Jason, what are your what were your three three takeaways from last week, this month? Uh, you know, I really, really loved uh, Luke Cage, and you know, it seems like we just can't get off of, get off Luke Cage and Marvel. But uh, yeah, you know, Jendi Tartofsky, you know, is doing that book. He's uh, he, he had a hand in the art. Finally, a decade later. Yeah, I mean, he, he comes to comics, but you know, I really like the book. It's very, very kind of tongue in cheek. You know, like, you know, kind of. Um, very, very, uh, it takes him back to the 70s. And so, you know, he's still, you know, in the yellow shirt and a tiara and the, the blue pants and everything. And he, and it's almost like he's Spider Man kind of because he's facing, facing, you know, a huge, uh, you know, all of his rogues gallery. They're coming for him. Oh, really? So, you know, Black Mariah and, and <clears throat> you know, Diamondback and Mr. Fish, you know, Cotton they're coming for him. Yeah. Awesome. Well, actually, I didn't see Cottonmouth. I didn't see him. Really? But, uh, I didn't see Mace, who has the mace for the hand since he got it cut off. Oh. And uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, very good book. I'm eager to see where it goes. I mean, I would have really loved for this to have been an animated series, but hey, you know, we can't always get what we want. But, True. you know, I think that this is a very, very good series. It has, you know, just this kinetic art and has every sensibility of Jimmy Tartofsky. If you watch Samurai Jack, which I hear is coming back. Gotcha. 
And uh, Finally. if you hear, if you saw the Clone Wars, you know, not the one that's on Cartoon Network, but the one that was kind of like in what, I guess, 10 little 10 minute increments. Yeah. Yeah. If you've seen that series, then that was, that this, was, that the was series awesome. will be for you. Um, I think my, ah, I'm, I'm torn. Uh, I loved He-Man Thundercats. I thought they did a great job with that story. Um, Flintstones has been actually pretty, pretty legit. Really? I, I, yeah, yeah. Flintstones, it's a great mirror on society. But the series I've been loving from issue one, I think they're on issue five, issue six now, is Aftershock's Rough Riders. Aftershock has been doing some really, really good books lately. Uh, Rough Riders and The Fix are actually my two favorite books right now. And actually, those are the two that I actually look forward to when they come out. Which is kind of rare now for a lot of comics. But Rough Riders and, and The Fix are two of the best books out there right now. Hmm. You know, another one was, of course, you know, Walking Dead. <clears throat> you know, they're in a war right now with... Uh, I can't remember who they're in. Uh, kind of came in on the uh, story. But it looks like uh, Negan and Rick are working together. Yeah, I'm reading the trades. So I'm like, maybe like four issues, five issues behind you. But Rick's group is fighting the Whisperers. Uh, who are uh, humans and who who wear zombie skin? Yeah, yeah. I, really can't, I really can't. I really can't. I really can't wait to see that on on play that play out on the, the TV show, which yeah. comes out uh, later this month. Yeah. Now I'm wondering if they'll actually have Rick and Negan working together eventually. I mean, are they going to go that way? They've hinted at that, and I'm really curious to see if that's actually going to happen because Rick and Negan are. are Mortal enemies. Maybe. Mortal enemies, but it's two sides of the same coin. Really, I mean, when you look, when you look at any hero and their main villain, it's always they there's, something a, there's something in common. And Negan and Rick both wanted to protect their people. Negan was just a sadistic psycho, and Rick is trying to trying to be a good person, even if even when he fails. TV time. Yay. Uh, last week we saw the uh, CW come back. CW has a really nice lineup. It's Supergirl, Flash, Green, uh, Green Arrow, Legends of, Legends of Tomorrow. <clears throat> I two, watched two of them. Two, two of them come out. Uh, Supergirl premiered uh, on Monday, and Legends starts up. Legends starts up, I believe, this week. Is it? Is it? Like, yeah, this, this week. week? Okay. Um... Only on the rule of Superhero Fight Club. Never ask for more Fight Club. Oh, God, Monkey! Bad Monkey. Not God. <laughs> um, see, the ones that made their debuts, their season debuts, well, they were uh, Arrow and Flash. And first, let's start with Flash because okay. they're doing the Flashpoint. So, uh, what should we call this, uh, Brave new world that you've whipped up for us. I was thinking Flashpoint. So they're doing Flashpoint, and we both actually watched Flash. I liked it. I liked it. Uh, I wish they would have stayed in that universe just a bit more. Uh, see, how, maybe see what happened, you know, maybe with Arrow and that universe, which I think we do still see that. Um, uh, coming up, but it's not what I wanted to see. I mean, I wanted to see a lot more. Uh, which we've kind of played with that. They played with that before with Earth 2, where uh, we see the inverses of certain characters. Yeah, and Green Arrow's dad was the Green Arrow, and and Oliver died on the ship. Um, so that was a little bit of a play on that. But and of course, especially with Legends of Tomorrow, <clears throat> we're seeing you know certain characters. Right. Are, you know, maybe seeing them older or younger, or maybe even you know, evil or we good. we saw the future. Uh, we saw the, the the Dark Knight Returns version of Green Arrow, where he had lost his army, had the goatee, which was awesome. I just like I wanted more of the Cisco Ramon from Flashpoint. I like that cocky, rich. Because he's not the most confident guy. He's not. He's not. I, I like the fact that you know he finally had. Uh, you know, and, and and Ariel Crabell guest starred as like his girlfriend, and she's just an absolute you know. Gem, yeah, man. she's gorgeous. I'm like, oh my god, I want more of her in there. Um, it's okay. So Flash, uh, I liked it. I want to see more, but Flashpoint isn't over. We get. They said there's gonna be about four issues, uh, four, four issues, four episodes devoted to Flashpoint and the ramifications. So we'll see how that plays out. What did you think? You know, at first, 
I, I kind of thought it was disappointing. I mean, because, you know, like we agreed on, I mean, I want to see, you know, more of this world. Yeah. And it seems like at the end of this episode, they just, you know, they take him back to the point where his mother dies, you know, right. the first flash kills his mother. And, you know, I just kind of wanted to see it, but it just seemed like the stakes, you know, were so high that they had to kind of rush to that to that <clears throat> resolution because you know Barry was losing his powers, he was forgetting things. And that was the other thing is like they could have dragged that out for another episode or for yeah for well, another, like another episode. Another three episodes, you know, where he starts to lose. Yeah, like mean. the first one could have been like oh, and then at the end of episode one oh something happens where like you know he he loses a memory. They could have easily dragged that out, but I mean, I, Greg Belanti and his team haven't messed up yet with with Flash. Arrow last season, I still haven't finished it. Um, but but I, I trust him on the Flash. Oh yeah, I mean Flash. I think Flash is probably the best show that uh, the CW verse has going right now. I mean it's yes. light, it's fun. You know it gets dark when it needs to be. All right, so what were your thoughts on Arrow? Uh, my thoughts on Arrow, <clears throat> I actually like seeing Oliver, you know, trying to balance that duality, you know, superhero and, and mayor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the flashbacks are always, always probably the best part of that show. That's true. When he, you know, is back in Russia and, you know, um, Oh, that's right, Anatoly, the flashbacks. Yeah, and Anatoly, like, res rescues him and, you know, he says, oh, hey, <clears throat> wait a minute, so what are you doing? And, you know, he's, he's bound. Mm -hmm. And then he dislocates his thumbs to get him out and he puts him back in. I'm like... Wow, I'm like, I've never seen that before. Yeah. <laughs> but it's actually pretty cool now. I'm not going to try it. But, uh, <laughs> but um, that's, yeah. the, that's next episode. Yeah. Jason breaks his thumb to get out of a handcuff. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but I, I actually did like it. I mean, I, I guess I'm drawn more to the darker things, you know. Even though I do tend to, tend to go with Flash more, I mean, I do like Arrow. You know, but just like, you know, don't really go too dark because basically Arrow is kind of filling that void for Batman because we're probably never, ever, ever going to see you, a Batman series or Batman even make an appearance. You know what? We said the same thing about Superman, though, and look at Supergirl. They're bringing on... I think Superman. Gotham or something. Like, or, well, they, they well yeah, Gotham, Superman. but Superman is coming on a Supergirl. Yeah, but the thing is... Wait, I mean, that they, sounds phrasing. Yeah. Superman will appear on Supergirl. <laughs> there we go. But, I mean, the thing is... You know, they've referenced, you know, Bloodhaven, uh -huh. you know, and, you know, we never saw Nightwing. The only time you really saw Batman was really on that old Birds of Prey show. Yeah, show and even then. Oh, too. Yeah. And you only saw him, you know, from, like, what, the back or just, you know, yeah, blur running. and stuff like that. So the thing is, I mean, it would be nice, you know, even if, you know, he appears, you know, just, you know, you gotta have Batman. And they have referenced him on uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah. And then the pilot. Um, so there was that. Uh, are you watching Gotham and Lucifer? Oh, uh, <laughs> Gotham a little bit. I know they've started it to where, you know, the monsters, you know, have, you know, been loose, you know, last, you know, season finale, you know, the monsters got loose and yeah, they're supposed we're to be Gotham. the doppelganger of Bruce Wayne. Yeah. We've got, we're in, we're in Gotham. And I love how Gotham titles their seasons. It's Gotham City, uh, Gotham, uh, Mad Monsters City. Of, yeah. Mon it's Mad City. Okay. And, um, we, we got introduced to the Mad Hatter, uh, to Alice. To uh, younger Killer Croc, uh, older Poison Ivy. Um, I the, I love the show. I think the first season was rough, and this season is better than last, which is saying something. I my my one pause is that everyone is in their mid to late twenties, and Bruce is fourteen. Yeah, about thirteen, fourteen. Thirteen, fourteen. So yeah. by the time so he's he, twenty-five, they'll all be, be older. forty and. You'll feel kind of feel bad about a forty-year-old being punched in the gut with a steel toad. Yeah. Food. <laughs> but at least Catwoman. But at least Catwoman is. Catwoman will be yeah the same age. And I think Poison Ivy should have been the same age too. <clears throat> she was, and they they aged her. Yeah. So, but she's not. Been, she hasn't been aged really like that. She's supposed to be nineteen. Okay, so she's well, a few years older. So that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Um, are you watching Lucifer? No, and and I've told that uh, I remember James saying that I should be watching you, it because Lucifer is probably. I'm not even calling it a guilty pleasure. It's a good show. You're psychic or something? No, I can't read people's minds. I'm not a Jedi. What do you desire more than anything else in this life? This is it? This is your big trick? It's just a straight good show. And um, I know people have argued that it's not a uh, comic book, like, ripped from the comic books and they made a police 
police procedural. Well, it's just like human targeting. You know? Yeah, but it's still it's still a fun show to watch. And I think if you take out like the fact that it is based off the Vertigo comic book, you'll have fun with it. Yeah, because I would see the comic and I would read, you know, flip through some of it. Uh -huh. And actually, it was, you know, wasn't that bad. I mean, I'll, you know, based off your recommendation, I'll have to go back and read some of the issues or even, you know, go back and watch the show. Yeah, just go back, just marathon it. You know, it's it's a marathon worthy show. <clears throat> I'm gonna jump into action figures real quick. Truck tire. Eh, I can't stop. Ah! And <clears throat> I picked up this week by selling a bunch of my stuff. The sideshow. Captain America. Uh, Sideshow does an amazing job with... <laughs> uh, Sideshow, whoever sculpts these figures does an amazing job. Um, the, the, the sculpting is amazing. You get uh, Chris Evans' face. You get a uh, helmeted version. Uh, you get a crossbones helmet for some reason. Uh, and then a stand suit. I mean, the suit's amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, I think this is probably one of their... I, I love... Uh, side shows, and I really, I don't think anyone, any of them have really got anything less than like a, a nine for me. They're all just like insanely <clears throat> good, and I'm having trouble putting them on a stand. Oh well. Alright, Jason, what's your side topic? Well, <clears throat> my side topic, well, I'm gonna go into action figures. Now, I picked up at Toys R Us, and this thing cost me like $79. It was a golden black dragon sword. <laughs> oh, okay. And and the thing is, this this thing here, it is uh, it is great. It is like a big, you know, just. It's the dragon sword. <clears throat> yeah, I never had any Power Rangers toys, even though I was such a fan. And I can remember going to the store back in '93 when the show first came out, and it was being shown at two thirty in the afternoon, as opposed to you know four or five mm -hmm. o'clock. So I would go, and you just see like all these kids and their mothers just fighting each other, you know, mm -hmm. to get these toys. I'm like, wow, I'm like, you know, I can't get any. And like, I would call around different toy stores. Oh, we're out, we're out. So now that I'm a grown adult and I got the money now, I saw it and they also had a communicator. Well, you can, you can actually have the I communicator. Want one of those. Yeah, it's 50 bucks, I believe. So, you know, guys, get down to your local Toys R Us and get this. Um, <laughs> they had uh, the Falcon Zord from uh, the third season in the movie. I still have the, the, the Falcon Zord. Really? The original one, yeah. And uh, lucky you, because oh. I, I, I was never able to get that either. Um, and then they had uh, the Thunder Zord, the Thunder Megazord. And the Thunder Megazord was about 150 and I was like, oh, I want this Dragon Zord, this black and gold Dragon Zord, because <clears throat> I just had to get it, you know? But it is worth the purchase, I think, I mean, because, hey, it's, like you said earlier, it's a Dragon Zord. Now, let, now, they do have a, a black and gold uh, Megazord, too. <sighs> I've seen that. Yeah, and the thing is, I... I would get that. They had one left, and I was like... Megazord, Dragonzord, Megazord, Dragonzord. So how do you go with the Dragonzord? I mean, come on. I, I don't blame you. I don't blame <laughs> you. Uh, the Dragonzord is awesome. I, I want... I'm, I, I will say this. I'm really disappointed in... Uh, the Voltron Netflix show was amazing. They're releasing the f action figures, and I'm so really disappointed. Really? Yes, they're plastic. They should be metal like the original ones. Yes, I remember. Oh, I, I still have my old So do I. I actually, <laughs> I I actually have like, the blue line in my bedroom. It was I a got, cool line. I got... I remember my dad bought me the entire robot, mm -hmm. and I remember um, uh, my sister, dude. She, I think she was playing with it, and like she, it, the blue line doesn't connect to it, and I'm like, she kind of like chipped, like the little Boo. connector, yeah. Boo. And, uh, but you know what? I still have it. You know, I still look at it and reminisce about all those days. You know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean. <laughs> It, it seems that, uh, you know, they're just making things with plastic these days and not die cast like when we were kids. I know. I, mean, I but, know. You know, d with die cast, you know, it's more expensive to manufacture. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. Video games. Mafia 3 came out this week. And let me tell you guys, regardless of whatever edition you picked up, whether it's the standard edition with just a game only, whether you got the uh, you know seventy nine dollar collector's edition or the ninety nine dollar ultimate edition, whether you pre ordered it, you will not be disappointed. And you know, of course, you know Mafia Three, you know, is after Mafia Two, picks up with Lincoln Clay, who is a uh, black um, <clears throat> Vietnam veteran. He comes back home and he is uh, betrayed by a group of mobsters, and it's a revenge tale. 
and it's a very, very deep story. Now, I picked the game up on Friday. I've been playing around, around with it a little bit. I have not finished it yet, and I'll let you guys know when I do. But the driving mechanics are very awesome. I mean, it is, it's like Grand Theft Auto. Ooh. If, if 2K and Hangar 13 <laughs> made their own version of a Grand Theft Auto game, this is what it would be because there's so many side quests, there's, you know, people interacting with you, and, you know, the thing is, you know, the 60s, the 60s, especially the late 60s, you know, we're talking 1968, so it's, you know, right after the Civil Rights Movement, right. so, you know, racial tensions are, you know, really at an all-time high, and, you know, when you pass somebody on the street, you know, they can call you the N-word, right. you know, they get scared of you, you know, cops will, you know, sit up there and hassle you for no apparent reason at all. So, is it 68 or 2016? What's that? Is it 1968 or 2016 that you're playing in? Uh, you know what? That's a <laughs> good. That's a good one. But uh, yeah, you know what? It's 1968 because the cars and everything. Mm -hmm. the soundtrack is on point. I mean, you know, with uh, Mafia Two, I've I've played both. I mean, the subsequent ones with the previous ones. You're right. And you know, they were great. And this one, you know, takes Mafia Two. You know, I thought the Mafia Two was the pinnacle of the series. This one is is yeah. you know just tops. I mean. You know, the, the driving mechanics, the shooting mechanics, you know, the way the game looks, the way New Bordeaux looks. I mean, it is just awesome. It's a lot of hustle and bustle. Yeah. You can, you know, go on the street and, you know, if, if you rob somebody, if you kill a cop, you know, as a witness, it's going to call the cops. And, you know, just like it, you know, would be in real life. You That's know, awesome. Guess, depending on what area you're in. Right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then, you know, you got to evade the cops. And then all of a sudden, you know, when you go on a mission, I mean, it's, you know, the... the the cinematics are great. Yeah. I mean, whomever, you know, came up with the script, whomever wrote the game, it is awesome. Do yourselves a favor. Pick this game up. Don't rent it. Buy it. I mean, that's all I got to say. Can you rent games anymore? Uh, I think Game you have the Redbox. Yeah, yeah Gamefly. Game Game Red, I think Redbox is doing video game rentals, too. They are. That's right. Yeah, yeah I've, I've heard that Gamefly isn't worth it, though. No, it's not. I mean, it, look... Bypass all the Gamefly, all the Redbox shit. Pick this game up. You will not be disappointed. I love the game so far. I give it five out of five stars. We here at Bayou City Geeks. We give this game. It's a perfect game. It's going to compete with uh, Deus Ex. Really? For game of the year. I wow. So. You know what? And I, I bought it. I bought the second tier special edition of Uncharted 4. Got great great reviews, and then no one. I, I still haven't played it yet. I'm still working through through Deus Ex and and uh, Batman Arkham Knight. I'm still working my way through that. That's a that's a long game. Yeah, it is. That is a long fucking game. Um, but yeah, I want to try and get on Uncharted Uncharted Two or Uncharted Four by years end. You, you won't be disappointed. Um, yes. <laughs> All right, um, so we've we've covered the gamut of everything. Uh, I don't think we've we've left anything out. If if we did, we'll pick it up next week. Uh, if we did, get with us on YouTube or you know email us at buyoucitygeeks at gmail .com. There you go. This concludes our uh, first inaugural episode. Next week we'll probably be at a different location other than my apartment, or maybe we'll still be here. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, but with that, uh, I'm Bobby Behar. I'm Jason Elliott. <clears throat> See you in the funny papers.